Um, it's just because the little circle in the corner with the logo was nail. So, um, but you know, it's one of those things. Um, we'll just hang on a second. Okay, it looks like we're live. So, we are live. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what, mate, trying to get this podcast stuck. Yeah, I was just about to make that. I was just about to say that it's taken as long as Tony and Khabib to get this started. That's ah, what, the ah. fifth one. Right, we've done twice on Facebook. Didn't work. Although you could probably watch those things on Facebook. Um, once on my channel, but I thought it was actually on the Nail Nails channel, um, which would have got us a lot more viewers, but also would have yeah. um, probably uh, damaged the reputation of the company. Maybe from all <laughs> other words that we probably say. Um, so yeah, uh, yeah, so this is. We're, we'll work something out as how to how to tell people the intro. I'm not going to go over it again. Um, so, yeah, welcome to Lockdown with Adam and Nick. Uh, my name is Adam Wabda, and this is... Nick Banks, hello. Hello. Nick's got no head because it blends into the wall. Um, actually, it doesn't there. <laughs> oh, there we go. Oh, that's like a, it's like a magic trick. Um, so tonight we've got one of our very good friends on, and I'm going to turn you over to Nick to introduce a little bit more. So uh, the, the guy that we've got coming up now is a good friend of mine and Adams. He was best man at my wedding. And the Daily Mail once described him as a comedian. <laughs> <laughs> Please welcome, Matthew Fogg. Matthew Fogg, yeah. It, it, that, that was so fun. That was the one thing when I saw it, I was like, they described him as a comedian? What? <laughs> oh, here we go. Connected to audio. He's pr- oh, hey, hey he is. Uh, He's just waiting for his audio to connect. Hi, and there how's it going? All right, mate. Hello, yeah, good. How are you? Yeah, good. Thanks. I'm oh, just having to move my stuff around so I can see what's going on. I've just got a big picture of Banks's face here. So, I've got right, okay, so on. if you go to the top right. You can go to and click gallery view. Top gallery. These amateurs who we have oh, to. Oh, nice. Now you can see everyone hold like. Pop, Do a bit probably. of research first, man. Christ. <laughs> well, I was waiting for a producer to send me some decent, you know, patch, patch notes and some joining information. But just got oh. a link through from what do you call Boo 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 I was being a father, unfortunately. Well, actually, I wasn't. I was eating chicken wings with a child. Oh, there, Nick's gone, and he's back again. So, Matt, we've oh, we've yeah. had like we've done this the fourth time we've been up. Um, we've done tried it twice on Facebook. That didn't work. We went to YouTube once, and I thought I was on the wrong channel. Now we're on my channel, so things should be all right. So, fingers crossed. We'll just keep cracking on. Awesome. Nick's How's just going to keep jumping in and out. Yeah, is he on his Nick mobile phone? Keep... Is he on a laptop? You are? Yeah, yeah, he's, he's on his phone. Yeah. I'm back, I'm back. What, is D, is D not letting you have a go on the laptop tonight? Is it not your turn? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something like that. No, it's... Yeah. So, no, I just thought that the phone would be better because it was working better the other day than the laptop. The laptop keeps crashing all the time. So, <clears throat> I just thought... I'll try it with the phone. Well, you've got nice the only one that's not there, in a, but... The only one that's not in a dressing gown there is Adam. Adam, you should go and put, slip into your dressing gown, mate. No, Join I'm all right, mate. Thank you. I'm, I'm only to... wearing a dressing gown because I know you always wear your dressing gown in these things. I had to go get a dressing gown on specifically for this just <laughs> yes, so I could mate. do that. I don't, yes, want to, I don't want to be wearing this. This is not what I want to be wearing. <laughs> this is a cool look. Oh, me, me, me dressing gown. I'm doing this just to stay to piss out you, Banks. Huh. Yeah, man. Why have your dressing gown on? No, uh, well, thank you. Uh, I don't need choice, I'd gown. probably wear something like this. You know, oh, I'm now he's plugging his like wares. Stylish. Just. See, how, how long have we been in the conversation? <laughs> <laughs> like, two minutes, three minutes. <laughs> Selling his wares oh, already. Oh, he is to get you it, yeah. I'm going to get you demonetized. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
<laughs> Matt, hello. How are you, sir? Uh, how's it going? Ladies and gentlemen, this is Matthew Fong, so-called comedian, as said by the, uh, the the Daily Mail, as Nick and ITV. Really out. He's been accused. Yeah. ITV as well. They said you were a so-called comedian. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And as you can see, yeah, he's got I'm a green gonna... screen behind him. So Matt has been using his green screen to um, to do what, Matt? Uh, I just started twitching. Twitching. Like Nick, Nick's been doing that for ages. <laughs> but, oh, uh, mate, I'm, like, I, I'm having you, um, issues here again. <laughs> Spider-Man. So I've been uh, replaying one of my favourite games uh, on ultra-hard mode uh, okay. during lockdown. And I've uh, been streaming that on Twitch for, yeah. for people to watch me get absolutely annihilated by bots, which should be a piece of piss. Like, if, if you... Watching this, like most people play it on like a, a a level where they can go around and look awesome on the live stream. I, I've seen a few people do it, and they're like they just bosh around the levels, and like you get to watch the story. Whereas for me, when I'm playing it, you just see me die a shitload, and then get really frustrated, and being like, I don't know why I'm not beating this. It's not even a boss, and I'm just getting killed all the time. That's <laughs> it's, it's, it's turned basically one of my favourite games. It's one of my least favourite games, but I'm I'm doing another live stream of that. I, I try and do it every day at like three o'clock. So apart from That's weekends, cool. how many people do you get watching so, you? Well, well, I, I've had so far. I've done one He's stream, died. and I've had 15, 15 viewers, and uh, yeah, it was good. Pinto watched Brian. It was, it was great to have some. That's about how many people you had in your room at Edinburgh, wasn't it? Oh, that was probably more, to be honest with you, the most. To be the, fair, Nick, you could only fit room. 12 into the room, so 15 was, a, that was a push. Yeah, man. So I think, uh, technically, in that room, you're supposed to be able to hold 20. I yeah. think that was the, the, the guideline room size. Yeah. But like, uh, on some nights, I managed to get like 36, 40 people. Wow, in that's room. brilliant, man. On the stage, wow. uh, like, I just I had people sitting on the stage, stuff like that. So I was literally stood in a corner in front of the door, just <laughs> doing my show to this full room. People are like trying to get in. I'm like, okay, not today, no. Uh, but yeah, so I, 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 was... I went up uh, for two, well, two nights. No, I was there for one night, actually, uh, to Edinburgh for the festival. Um, people don't know there's um, the Edinburgh Fest, Fringe Festival is huge. It's um, arts and theatre and, and so much comedy. Poetry, books, everything. There's everything, everything. there. And everything. so um, yeah. in August, I went up for a, a day to film a couple of gigs for a, our friend Raul, but I just decided to call in on Matt and uh, I saw his show. Um, and he, he told me it was a tiny room. Now, I actually think the room I'm in is bigger. <laughs> Because it can fit a double bed I, in it. I, I'm really glad that you came, Adam, but to be honest with you, it really hurt my bucket, you know. <laughs> Why? Are you saying that I took up too many seats? Yeah, I took up three seats, innit? <laughs> <laughs> I I you, did mention, you did mention somebody there, Raul Coley. We have to give Raul a shout out because uh, on yeah. Tong's I do, Raul is the greatest guy to ever take a group of pissed up stoned men around oh, yeah. Amsterdam. He knew everywhere. I'm, I swear he was getting paid by those places. Like, the way he was taking the same devices, he was like, look, come on, sort you out a deal. Little kickback. Get in there. Come in. Yeah. Give me 10%. No, no, he did He did a good job. He really did a good job for that. So, yeah, thanks, Raul. Yeah. Much appreciated. Yeah, Not that cool. you ever watch this, but, you know. My best um, man just picked a destination. I went, that, that'll do. All right. <laughs> All right, okay, the best man picked it right, okay. Fair dues. It wasn't like drawn out of a hat or anything like that. It was specifically no, no. so you could smoke weed. Yep. We've already gone over it on this podcast that I whited and I was I was ill. And the, the next day I just did edibles and I was fine. So we don't have to reiterate yeah, me I've, spewing I've, in the street. I've watched all, <laughs> your, all your podcasts. I've watched all your podcasts. I really appreciate the shout outs. I've been like, I've been watching them and waiting to see like when, when they're going to come. Because like when when you first started doing this, I was stuck in Australia, so like listening to you guys, 
um, when we when we were just stuck out there, that was just really nice. It was just like bear in oh, mind, everybody, he was on his honeymoon. You yeah, know, the happiest honeymoon. time of his life. And he's caught. He's. I was just stuck in Australia. He we're was not calling it, we're not calling it a honeymoon anymore. Just, he literally, just, he literally raced coronavirus abroad. across the globe. That was it. It's not yeah. it, the time stuck abroad. The troubles abroad. That's what it was. <laughs> um, so hopefully we'll go on another honeymoon when when the world writes uh, itself. But um, yeah, it was just like being like listening to your podcast was like being in a phone call with you two, apart from um, you probably listen to me more when I listen to your podcast. That was it. Because <laughs> I wrote in the comments and you actually liked and responded to them. But it's Bank- I don't know what Banks is doing there. I don't know if he's, is the connections poor, if he's had too much weed, or is he just staying quiet? Just no, no, I'm just listening to what you're saying, man. In. No, no, I'm no, listening no. to what you're saying. Listen. Yeah. The, this is the longest I've, I've had Banks quiet on a phone call forever. Like you ring me, it'll touch me for like 45 minutes. Really? Normally he rings me. He rings me and he goes, All right, like, and I'm like, Yeah, I'm fine. And then I'm expecting him to say something and then he doesn't. So I've got to talk for the next hour. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's his entertainment. And I'm like, Have you not got a television, mate? Yeah, this no, no, is one of the problems you, 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 with being in, in lockdown or quarantine. Yeah. He's, um, you don't have that daily stuff to talk about anymore. Do you know what I mean? You can't be like, oh, fucking, I was down in the pub and I saw this guy and he was he was being right, idiot. You can't even have that little, you don't have the office banter. You don't have no, oh, Jim down at, at down, he was printed. Well, right, okay, you've and just started. mentioned three places that you don't go, a pub, an office or a gym. <laughs> <laughs> I go, I go, all, I go all those places. I get kicked out of all those places. Like, <laughs> why are you here? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, they kick you out because they're like, why are you here? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, nobody's talking about anything else other than coronavirus. Yeah, exactly. That's what so, it's no, coming. This is the thing. This is what I like. I, I like listening to your thing. Like when you had the UFC fight on, that wasn't that wasn't solely coronavirus. Obviously, it came up. It's going to come up because we're all stuck inside because of it. But, yeah, let's you know, let's it, talk. It, let's it, talk about one thing straight away. Let's get that out of the way. Right, right. Boris. Yes, he's yes, he's so he's out and he did a he did his interview and he yep. looked like shit. Yep. And um, he thanked a Portuguese a Portuguese person and a New Zealander. New Zealander, is that right? New Zealander? Yeah. Do you know do you know do you know what I find quite funny though? That the, the first nurse that he named on its name was Poling. Yeah. As in Poling. And and there was very yeah, and 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 it was I think that was very good. The like, very messaging. <laughs> yeah, I was quite. I was quite. What are you gonna do with, with polling? Really good. Oh my God! Somebody's just come on the chat and said, uh, "It's Helen Harker," and she said, "Oh my God, Adam Driver's on this as well." Brilliant! So, so Matt is now Adam I Driver. Imagine when I had my hair. Yeah. Yeah, I get. I get that bit. Really? Well, so you've been called Kylo Ren before. Yeah, 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 I, yeah. My, as soon as like uh, Adam Driver was in Star Wars, that was it. Like my brother messaged me this picture, and he was like, "Didn't know you were in Star Wars, mate." Mm, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm like, great, okay, cool. And uh, we, we're at, what was it? It was, it was the Wonderworks, I think, in Florida on International Drive. There's, it's like this crazy weird tourist trap type thing, but it scans your face and it yeah. basically says who your celebrity lookalikes are. And it was just okay. like Adam Driver, and then it was the guy from Walking Dead. Um, guess which one? <laughs> <laughs> Rick. Uh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> Gary Reeves. And then uh, I can't remember what the last one was. I think it was a black woman. I don't know. Well, but it was. It was is it better than the Facebook one? So extremely accurate. No, 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 no. It wasn't a Facebook one. It was in like a proper. It was supposed to be like a high tech thing, I guess. So I, I get- so I, before I put on a ton of weight, I used to get called um, yeah. Joaquin Phoenix quite a lot, and Gareth Gates. No, Gareth Gates. Gareth yeah, Gates. Gareth Gates. Gareth Gates. Hundred percent. When well, you what, when you were younger. Gareth Gates. Yeah, but like when you Joaquin your... Phoenix for some reason, and I was like, mm, and then all of a sudden, 
I caught a glimpse of him playing um, Johnny Cash. And I was like, ah, yeah, without like the hair lip and stuff. Um, it, was, it, it was, yeah, it was pretty similar. And Prince well, Nazim, looking... the boxer. <laughs> yes. To be honest, I can play yeah. both of them. Well, no, yeah, I can play the skinny younger. version and the fat version, so that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> What are you missing now, though, dude? With that, with that hair, in a couple of weeks, you're going to be starting to rock a T-bird jacket from Greece. That it is hair's getting bigger, up. isn't it? It's, it's yeah, it's getting, getting great about the Did you not see my leather jacket? It, yeah, you saw, you saw my leather jacket on stage, dude. It wasn't a black leather jacket. It was still a leather jacket. Well, I've, I've decided that because of everybody shaving their heads because of this like lockdown, and they're like, oh, I can't go to the uh, hairdressers. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, grow mine. And by the end of this, I'm going to look like Tony Monero from um, Saturday Night Fever, John Travolta's character. I'm just going to blow dry my hair every day and just make it big. So I would love to see. I, so, I would absolutely love to see Nick grow his hair for the rest of quarantine. Just have this side bush that just grows around. <laughs> <laughs> and just his ring hair. That would be brilliant. And so no, Nick wears that hat because he doesn't want people to realise that. He's I dare you. I dare you. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll, give, I'll, give, I'll give 50 quid to charity of, of your choosing. You I, I, I know you've got much wait. money, but that's all Come I can on. afford. But if you just grow it out, so it's just a <laughs> and then and then your newborn baby just pops out and she just has this big bushy head. <laughs> <laughs> It'd take ages to do that, bud. No, well, we've got a while. Just, just we've got a while, like at least two months. Yeah, yeah. we're going to be in here for another couple of months, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So yeah. Anyway, going back to Boris. Boris is out of hospital. He's um, looks like shit, but he's obviously alive, um, which is great news. Um, he looks a little bit humbled. Um, yes, I, uh, yeah, very humbled. Mm -hmm. um, uh, as, as if you wouldn't be though. You, you know, this was something that you could have reacted more <coughs> serious about sooner. Yeah, I think he understands the full consequence of his actions now. You know, it's not like. Unless it's a PR thing. Just no, I, th I, I do definitely think he understands that now. Yeah, you what? It's, um... yeah. Oh, we've lost each other there, I think. Um, so, yeah, that's that done. Coronavirus is out the way. Well, <laughs> in this conversation, anyway. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Forget about it for the moment. Sure. So, um... well, well, we'll have to touch back on it when, when we speak to Fong about uh, Australia. Yeah, okay. So, should we should we talk, talk a little bit about how we met first, though? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, yeah, people do, do that. I, I like this. I like this story because, like, for, for me anyway, it's like the OG crew of Rib Ticklers and like <laughs> the full crew of Rib Ticklers. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this. Come is on, good. then, Nick. So um, I first met Fong in 2011 at a gong show that he ran in Hull. Uh, not not in Hull, yeah, the ice rink in Hull. And, um, no, no ice rink in Doncaster. Sorry, man. Um, All the same place. Yeah. And uh, I finished second in that, but I should have won. And um... <laughs> is it Matt's fault that you didn't win? No, yeah, the other yeah, guy had brought a shovel, right? And my rules are, are if anyone brings something that can hurt you, just let them win. You know, if you brought an axe to a gig, fuck it, you could win. <laughs> I found two axes in my shed tonight, today. Um, really? But not just like, not just like oh, a normal axe, two Viking axes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was from, oh, our that from that Viking thing that we filmed from up Viking on film, yeah. 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 Martin Moore. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, just, yeah. I just found them in the shed today. So um, I'm going to play with them tomorrow. I'm sorry. Yeah, anyway. In the hot tub. So, so Nick came second. Um, how did he get gonged off? Or no, no, I beat the gong. No, he didn't. Gong. No, like they were oh. they, they were a real nice audience. Like the all six people that were there were lovely. I think really, <laughs> really good. You know, um, but like I said, you don't mess with a guy who's brought a shovel. No, no, <laughs> they don't. Definitely not. Definitely not. They both so when did you start comedy? They both comedy, did well on the clap off. When, when, did, when did you start comedy? comedy? Oh, gosh. Uh, t t technically, 2010. So this is going to be my, like, end of 2010. So I didn't really properly get into it till um, 
2011. Like, yeah. 2011 was like the year I probably tried to gig at, like at least two, three times a week. Like open mm -hmm. mic stuff was like all the time. Like I, I remember just a couple of weeks where it was like every night was working the day job and then going out and doing a, an open mic after and then the next day i'd be driving somewhere else and then be going off to another open mic so i was i was working as a salesman so i was doing a, about 150 miles uh, a day as a salesman and then on top of that probably doing about 150 miles for gigging as well yeah so it was it's so you like spend a lot of time in the car oh yeah loads of time in the car no like, wonder you've got so many jokes about being in a car <laughs> well did so but it's usually just me on my own you know what i mean especially the in the early days it was just so do you know the story the about Matt having a heart attack adam he had a heart attack he thought he was having a heart attack what was this when the police pulled him over and he had weed no 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 so this was um i think no, we were oh, no, uh, this, 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 this another time. i got i got like a, i got another like time. a just, i can't just, remember just, if it was a what Oh, another time. Yeah, just talk about another time. <laughs> it was Go basically, on, long story short, he thought he was having a heart attack, but it was actually the fumes from his petrol tank seeping into the into the cab with him that uh, nearly I, killed him, man. It wasn't. All right, we've all been there, mate. We've all been there. Let me get let me get this straight, right? First of all, it was a it was it was a near death experience. I could have no, died. I agree with that. It was. There was, a, there was a serious chance of actual death. But instead of it being a health-related issue, it's, uh, it, it's just about being fucking stupid, isn't it? That's it. That's, <laughs> that's what's going to kill me eventually. It's not going to oh, be... Oh, one million percent. No virus or <laughs> You're not going to die of natural causes, causes at all, man. Yeah, no, 100%. I'm probably going to get shot by somebody. And, like, we don't even live in a country where guns are allowed. Do you know what yeah. I mean? I'll probably find one and be like, oh, this is a toy. And shoot my own fucking <laughs> brain now. Now, come, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll definitely, uh, you're not going to die of natural causes. It's going to be an accident. And it will be your fault. You remember the time when we had to push him up a big hill uh, outside of the petrol station? Um, yes, he ran out petrol. Um, classic. He talked he timed that near enough perfect, though. That was that. near enough perfect, but he didn't have to get out the car and push uh, up the hill, did he? He it timed it just lads. so that me and you <laughs> got out the car and pushed him up the hill. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was technically the lightest person, so you do want the lightest person in the car steering. You don't want the, heavy, you don't want the heavier guys in the car, do you? That's just adding to your problem. Absolutely, yeah. I totally agree with that, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was coming back from filming um Danielle Parton Bono thing. Fifty yeah. Shades thing. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah you can check everybody, that out on YouTube. Fifty Shades of Grey. Um, if you'd like to see Matt and Nick dressed as gimps, yep. Um, I'll post <laughs> a link to that in the description box. Um, oh, yeah. That was that was that was a cold day. Yes, mate. You don't have to tell yeah. That, that was a cold day. Yeah, it was because the, the evidence that it was a cold day. Somebody stuffed <laughs> their trousers. And to, somebody to be didn't. fair, though, it, it it came out a real good video for like scenes. It was like just all filmed in one day. Yeah, yeah, and I went on to work with Mike, the DOP, quite oh, a few okay. times now. Um, so Mike Staniforth, who I met on that shoot. I got in touch with him um, and asked him to be the director of photography on Ripper. Oh, okay. Um, so he did that. Oh, wicked. I, I love that. Then he shot Please Don't Die for us, and he's also hopefully going to shoot other stuff in the future with us as well. So nice. he's a real good guy. So, yeah. You and, and obviously... link to Ripper in. Sorry? And if anyone's not seen it, they can do that. Ripper. Yeah. If, yeah. if anyone's not seen it... Ripper's good, man. Ripper's that. good. That's like I always, I always tell people about Ripper. <laughs> so, Thank you. Much appreciated. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, that watching. was a good day as well. That one. So, um, yeah. 
Well, Lime that was you. Mine, you got like, was it a thousand dollars or five thousand dollars got donated by Kevin Smith for Ripper? Yeah, five hundred. Five hundred. Five hundred quid. Oh, 500 quid. Yeah, that was pretty yeah, sweet. Well, no, actually, sorry. He thought he was donating $500. Turns out he was do donating £500, um, which is probably why like he never $750. Spoke to him. <laughs> I, I can imagine him getting that through, and he's like, what the <laughs> fuck? Oh, shit. You know what? God. He'll have been stoned no, no, when no. he did it. He'll have been stoned when he did it. So it's his own damn fault. I still would have been pissed off. I would have been like, motherfucker. So <laughs> Kevin Smith, yeah, fil film director of Clerks, Mall Rats, Red State, uh, big big hero. Of mine. Um, I think he only gave us the money because we basically just um, hounded him for like four oh, months. Okay. We absolutely like on Twitter. Me and Jim would would tweet him. Every day with the link to the to, to the to the um, Indiegogo campaign, oh, and he probably okay. just give us so the money to get rid of us. Fair enough. Like, nag, 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 nag. I, yeah. I have tweeted him every day afterwards saying thank you, just for, this, <laughs> for the equal number of days that it took <laughs> for him to agree for the money. Just thanks, thanks yeah. for the five hundred, and then just <laughs> add in a different different person every day. <laughs> yeah so yeah kevin smith man. Then the, the sooner they donate the, the better is for them because they're not getting extra oh, tweets yeah. of you being like hey thanks <laughs> do you think you Thank can you do, smith, do, remember, well? do you remember when you gave me the 500 quid but you should obviously tweet back after 30 days you know make sure that check is cleared and <laughs> then tweet yeah, just, just so he can't go onto his bank stamp and go undo. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, so we met in the first time we met was the walk, wasn't it? Uh, we had met briefly before that at Flix. Yeah, but uh, a few times. Please. But you were always super busy. I like, I get yeah, to yeah. Flix loads when it was. Uh, when it, when it was the movie cafe. Yeah. Um, I didn't realise we'd met was, before the walk. I thought we'd met just on the you walk. You were always the guy who gave me the free beers who was like, you an act. And I was like, I had him. You were, yeah, but me. bear in mind, everybody, right. please don't think that I'm an ignorant person. It was just that there was like eight people on it every night and they were all different every single week or month or whatever. And oh, just, yeah. And and you, you, were, you were filling the place like most comedy nights as well. So you had people ordering mm -hmm. food. People, you were getting yeah. cooked left, right. And I was more, I, to be honest, a lot of the time I was cooking the food. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You were upstairs yeah. a lot of the time. Yeah, just upstairs. come down for the edge and act. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but yeah, I mean, the, what I really remember of you is on the comedy walk. Um, and you were like a, a total stalwart of that, of that whole affair. You know, you were like, with everybody all of the time doing it you know it wasn't like you know we we all had a little oh, yeah. bit of time off it, apart it, from it, Sully and Simon yeah. the, the um, only time I, I got in the van was when I got told I had to get in the van because I was performing mm -hmm. that night and there was no way I was going to make it in time yeah that <laughs> was the, like, the middle day wasn't it uh, the middle of the road yeah, thing. yeah yeah that was um, fourth day yeah um, and yeah I think the only two people that did it was Sully and Simon, they walked the whole Sweet. way, which actually yeah. came up on, on, on my feed yesterday. So it must have been seven years ago yesterday that it, it happened. Um, yeah, Coggers uh, was performing at Heading on the, heading on the heading Wall on the seven wall. years ago yesterday, yeah. So, um, so, yeah, so that must have happened then. But, yeah, so obviously that's where we met, and it was obviously the start of a, a lovely budding relationship. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. I mean, it was, it was great to... The, the walk was great in general just because you got to to meet so many different comedians of so many different levels do you know what i mean and yeah. so you, you had you had people who'd been in the industry like 20 years plus you had people who'd been going much longer than that in there and then you had people who'd been going like 12 months so i think i have been been going seven years ago three three years so i've been going a little bit of time i had been going just enough time to to not completely suck, but still nowhere near as good as these guys who were like 25 plus years in. 
But so was that cool that to was that them. good to be able to see so many acts in such a short space of time? Yeah, for me it was um, like that. Just, it was an amazing yeah. that week. That week was seriously a proper masterclass, not just as being a comedian, but also like how comedians should interact with other comedians. Right. You know. I just, so, explain more about that then. About so that the interaction see, thing. See, so how you get the how, how are you going to get the best out of other other comedians? You know what I mean? Because they're going to want to help you because they'll see that your jokes in a slightly different different way or mm-hmm. especially if you gig with somebody for a long time so like i've gig with nick for a long time i gig with daniel nicholas for a long time so i can write for those two people quite well mm-hmm. whereas if i was to write a joke for someone else if it was someone who's just saying right matt I'm right so that there was sort of like a, you could bounce ideas off each other and yeah and yeah yeah, yeah. Like, Right. It's less the mentality of we're against each other and we're in this together mentality. Do you know what I mean? Weirdly, Joe Rogan talks about that a lot, doesn't he? On his podcast, he says that like when he first got into comedy, it was sort of like everybody hated each other and they were sort of like yeah. at each other's throats all the time. But he said now, at the, especially at the comedy store, but even just a wider field, everyone supports each other. And like, for instance, podcasts is a big thing. They all go on each other's podcasts. Yeah, yeah. they're just helping promote each other. They're doing what like friends and that do. You know what I mean? It's just yeah, they're not shitting on each other. Yeah, they're not I shitting on each other. They're not slagging each other off. They're like putting out content for the sake of their their own content. They yeah. like doing yeah. it. So I I don't think it's like it was in in the old days when like Joe Rogan was starting off though, because like there wasn't the internet. There wasn't. Mm-hmm. You know, live streaming like we we couldn't well, be doing this. Started off like we're doing now. Well, do you, do you know what I mean? When clubs clubs were proper clubs. And I think he means before before, before the podcast. Before, uh, before, okay. before the podcast, before you know, when he was doing just his, his stand up stuff. Yeah. So, but like the the grind then. Mm-hmm. would have been more difficult and it's just as difficult now apart from that you you, you have no excuse now yeah like you, everyone expects you like if you're a comedian right you you've got to make content you've got to do this you've got to do that you've got to promote yourself you've got to go out and you've got to get booked on gigs or you've got to send emails and you've got to not just get booked on certain gigs but you've got to get booked by the right people who book gigs people yeah. who book weekends for clubs and then if you're not getting booked by that club that books weekends, then you're not going to get by, booked by the other club that books weekends. Yeah. So it's just the same people who get booked by clubs for weekends. Yeah. So you've got, to, you've, got to, you've got to make your own path. And then when you go, like I know a few people who, who definitely uh, strive forward and, and <coughs> done much better and made their own way. And now they're doing the weekend stuff. Yeah. So that, that's what everyone's got to do. But it's not like you're just doing that on your own. You should yeah. be able to do that with with other people. And like it, it's it's definitely a difficult industry to be in, especially if you are on your own, because you don't have people to bounce ideas off, and you don't have you know that that kind of safety net where you can go right. Well, I've tried this joke three times in my living room with two of the comics. And it's got worked over that way rather than going on stage yeah. and then going, this is a brand new bit of material. And then you've got yeah, to do live yeah. editing whilst it's got, whilst it's going on. And then you might eventually get to that punchline that you got with the two comedians on the sofa, but it's taking you maybe two, two times out on stage. And just to get onto those two times out on stage, that's, you know, probably four to eight hours of sending emails. It's a, Constant work in progress. Well, some some stuff is some some stuff becomes like a finished piece. I think, uh, like the now there's always the, you my can always, joke. Always tweak a that's, joke. That's that's always been that's always been locked in. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but I understand what you're saying. But you can always tweak a joke. A joke can always be tweaked to make it to make it a little bit. A little bit funnier. I think so. I think a lot of stuff is going to have. A no, I, I, I sort of agree with Matt on that. Like, it, it gets to a funny point, and then sometimes you can keep working on it and working on it, and you lose sort of what you. 
Yeah, but you don't know. Working on, I mean, I'm not a comedian, but as a writer, because I'm I'm a producer and a writer, I sometimes I overwrite things, you know, and I'm like, oh shit, I have to take I'm it not, back. I'm not specifically yeah. talking about and, the writing. I'm, you, I'm you quite might have had a good idea. So uh, you might have had a good idea by like your third draft, <laughs> but because you go, oh, it's not quite right, and you've not given it to an audience yet, you keep tweaking, and then you'll but, never get back to that. What what that what I'm trying to say is because it's. It's it's not about the writing. It's about the there's more than just the writing. There's the delivery, the facial yeah. expression you pull when you say that joke. You can yeah, tweak yeah. them. Oh tweak yeah, them. comedy's comedy's one hundred percent what you do with this as well as 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 what you do with your words. Yeah. Oh, oh but then again, it is what you do for some comedians. Do you know what I mean? I don't think you can you could say that so much for Lost Voice Guy. You know that is more about the words, isn't it? That's pure. That's pure, pure comedy. That is hard, true form stand-up comedy. That's joke. Yeah. So joke for people comedy. who don't know who uh, Lost Voice Guy is, um, he's a comedian uh, called Lee Ridley, who is um, it is Lee Ridley, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, Lee Ridley. Because um, you only know him as as, as Lost Voice Guy, um, and he has is it cerebral palsy? Yes. We're all I just guessing here. Um, no, no, I think it is. He's very disabled. Um, he's in a chair. He doesn't have a voice. So he writes his comedy and he delivers it from an iPad. And so it goes through the speakers and he's absolutely hilarious. Was he on Britain's Got Talent? He won Britain's yeah, Got Talent. He won, he won he Britain's won, Got Talent. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he so, won it. Yeah, fantastic. Right. And he's, 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 he's absolutely fantastic. I remember when he, he, he played Flicks, didn't, didn't he? Yeah, well, I, I actually yeah. I actually emceed his first ever gig. You emceed Sunderland. his first ever gig. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing, in, man. In in Sunderland, and then and he's uh, and he's how actually how he's come been now, successful. Man. Look, look, <laughs> look how far he's come now. Right, and you were you were emceeing that gig. You were like the the old boy on the gig. You were the guy who's and it was his first gig. Look where he is now. And he, hey, honestly, <laughs> like yeah. what I remember from it, he, like he. Smashed it. He got a standing ovation at the end of that, and there was his, it was his first ever gig, and we were all. Just I think that's in intimidating when everyone stands up and you can't. You think that's well, no, a bit can, intimidating. He can he can walk. Oh yeah, he can, can't he? Sorry, yeah, I forgot he can he can he can actually walk. Yeah, yeah. But, he's um, in the chair quite a lot of the time as well. Uh, yeah. I, don't, I don't know his daily routine, so. <laughs> All right, okay. probably not hitting up the gym. All right. <laughs> See how Nick just made me out to be a total twat there. <laughs> I didn't mean to, mate. <laughs> He's just like, yeah, you can walk, you dick. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, bud. Oh, I see what it is funny about Flix. I remember that there was a drunk guy who was in a wheelchair at Flix who Sean. was so pissed Sean. he walked home. Yeah. <laughs> that was, that was in a nightclub. So that so, yeah, in, that is that actually a really good story. So um, when I had my old cafe, Flicks, which we've been talking about, um, it was one of the first nights I'd, I'd opened and we did a comedy, uh, no, a quiz night. And um, we were packed. It was absolutely brilliant. I'd had, like, the most amazing night, um, takings-wise, and so much fun. And there'd been this guy called Sean who was in a wheelchair who had been in there since, like, 2 o'clock. And he'd been drinking cider all fucking day he was wrecked anyway at the end of the night i was clearing up and i found a wheelchair <laughs> and i was just like <laughs> i was like what the what, what where, where's sean his wheelchair is he where's he gone and i like for a very brief moment i thought that i was i uh, i thought i was like jesus especially or today it being easter <laughs> and i was jesus that i'd given him That's special good. special cider <laughs> that had cured him <laughs> <laughs> and he got up and he'd walked out. Anyway, it turns out he could actually walk, but he was so drunk that night that he forgot his wheelchair. <laughs> and his mate came, up, came a bit to the, the day after. Like there were some pictures in um, there were some characters used to come in flicks. We did, we had some there real characters Mike. in flicks. Mike used to be at all the comedy nights. Mike! Mike. <laughs> Hi! I'm Mike. Yeah. I like love comedy. Every comedian, every comedian that performed on that stage at yeah. some point took the piss out of Mike, like the headliners. 
<laughs> Everybody oh, yeah. did. And oh, what a lovely guy. I saw yeah, him man. not long ago, actually. He's a lovely guy. Oh, yeah, um, man. He's a... And he's got like the biggest dick ever, <laughs> which you told us about, Nick. Well, like, and he's he probably it out and he never just, used it. Bro, That's it the just saddest had, thing. It just landed. You just heard it go, sploosh, as it landed in it. <laughs> I was just like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> But is is that right? So like, that's a bad thing, isn't it? Like this guy's probably never really. For those people who don't know, again, I mean, we're taking the piss out of a sort of a bit of disabled person again. But Mike, Mike's a lovely bloke. Well, Mike but, loves no, love, just, Mike loves this man. So hello. He definitely, Mike. he definitely has never had a girlfriend. He's never never used his schlong, and um, and Nick saw that it was massive. <laughs> well, you never know. He he might have googled a pro- what to, a prostitute is. Just quite possibly, quite possibly, quite possibly. Oh, yeah, <laughs> but he was a lovely guy, and there was uh, drunk Paul. Drunk yeah. Paul was always a good one. Yeah, um, he used to he used to write poetry. Um, to Michelle who worked there, he used to write a poetry. Um, oh, beautiful! <laughs> big stalker. Was it like in Dan Walker. Dan Walker. Big up Dan Walker. Big up Dan Walker. I was talking to Dan the other day, actually. Um, I keep in touch with everybody still. I really do. I was talking to Dan. He's uh, doing okay. It was his birthday. And he he wanted me to come out, but I was actually traveling. This was like a few weeks ago before we went to lockdown. Um, and I was traveling down to Stoke, and I couldn't. I bet he's still finding a point from somewhere. <laughs> He'll be he'll be struggling now because that guy goes to the pub like every day. No, see, I see some pubs are struggling, and with their regulars, they just sent them a keg. <laughs> That's a fine. good idea. They'll, they'll just be sat at home f- trying to figure out how to get into a keg. They'll have a tap of one hundred. <laughs> no idea. That's actually a really good marketing thing, yeah. Can't come to us, we'll come to you. Yeah. Yeah, we'll send you a keg. Yeah. Oh. It'll be empty because everybody who makes the beer is now on uh, that 80% fucking weight furlough. Or are they what are you make- on about? No, no, it's, a, it's, yeah, an, essential, it's, it's an, an essential. No, it's an essential business, mate. Making of beer, it's it is. Essential. Just because you don't drink that much of it, trust me, it's essential. I've got a beer, yeah. One thing I've really enjoyed is seeing everybody become as um as um reliant on alcohol as I am. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's talking about drinking at like one o'clock in the afternoon. I'm like, yeah, I love this stuff. <laughs> it's all right for me to start drinking at nine o'clock now in my hot tub. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> <laughs> like a pimp. Whoop, yeah, whoop. absolutely. So, when Matt you see, hot tub? seen that with a hot tub? Hot tub, all yeah. good, Ned. Life all luxury, good. eh, Mr. Yeah. Hollywood? It should be Hollywood booby dupes, not Hollywood frangarity. Well, my booby dupes do float in it, so it's uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm not taking any photos in it very much, really. Hey, you, should, you should just take photos and upload them to like Pornhub or something. I should start my own OnlyFans. Only oh, fans. no, I've seen, yeah, I've seen some, some, some. So many people are doing it. There's a couple of my friends, yeah, who, who've just turned into cam girls during. Yeah, the, I know, but I know some people who've started doing it because, to be honest, they're making good money. They're making really good money. But, yeah, but then again, are you going to have a proper career in either TV or film or anything? I don't like that? think these people care. Yeah, I mean, I called one of them. So a few, a few years ago, um, Kirsty and I, uh, for the, the, the YouTube channel, we filmed with her Instagram girl. And I said to her, I said to Kirstie, she was only 17 at the time. And um, I used to say to her, uh, I said, sorry, I said to Kirsty, she'll be doing porn in a couple of years. And, and the other day it popped up on her Instagram, he's my only fans. I'm not saying it, it, it sort of is porn, I suppose. Um, but it's uh, it is. It totally isn't. becomes porn. It totally, yeah. it totally is porn. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, it, I know, I know, I know a girl who's created our own platform. It's called Admire Me. Um, she's called Chelsea Ferguson. She's from Hartlepool. 
she did very well as a stripper and and doing like glamour and things like that um and she started her own platform and that girl is raking it in so badly man um like yeah. she's yeah, making I, I, an I absolute know. killing but that's yeah, because she's exploiting men <laughs> vulnerable vulnerable men right probably who've never used a dick before who've never had a girlfriend that's what mike's doing <laughs> And this is what I'm saying. And you can't even afford a prostitute because all these money's going to these I follow fans or whatever. Fans <laughs> follow me. Bullshit. Follow me. That's yeah, cam, cam girl site rubbish. Uh, no more. Matt's just jealous because he can't do it. Oh, I'd so do it. Mate, Matt, if Matt's woman, if I was a woman, I would, I, would flaunt, I would flaunt every curve that I had. <laughs> if, I, if I was a woman, oh... Um, as soon as he comes off live from here, you can follow money. Fong at camman.com. No, <laughs> you can just go to my PayPal. <laughs> so why don't you why don't you start your own OnlyFans and 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 do something on it? it doesn't have to be porn related. Uh, but this see this just this <laughs> oh, God. To my don't put ideas into it. To a to. You you guys just trying to see my dick. <laughs> Long dong so I'm not falling for it. But you didn't you didn't get me in Amsterdam. You're not <laughs> gonna get me on this fan site, all right? <laughs> okay. I'll tell you what. Boabda, Boabda, to be fair, he's been caught out before, but sh should we go into that far? Oh, the, the, the Skype out? thing where the girl was trying. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, okay, cool. We can go into that. Uh, look, a lot of people have been caught with this, all right? Basically being caught with, your, with their dick in their hand. Look, happened to Joel Domet, happened to much more famous comedian than me, so I can't do jokes about it because he's it's, already he's, he's already fucking done them. It's, it's, got, it's got nothing to do with what actually happened. It was the morning it happened, Fong come running down into the uh, office downstairs, went, thanks. Thanks for being proper serious, man. I was like, what's up? Being black <laughs> for dinner. What for? I had my dick in my hand on Skype dinner. <laughs> <laughs> is she French? Yeah, she's French, yeah. Yeah. And this is the thing, right? I, I had no money. Fucking nothing to my name. We were living on ramen noodles at the time when we were squatting in a warehouse, right? <laughs> and they try and blackmail me for £75,000. I'm just going to stop you for a second, right? Because somebody's come on on the chat um, called Waxy Y and they've asked for what's the code for that meeting. This could be really, this could turn out really bad. It could be somebody with a dick in their hand. But do you think we should invax, invite Waxy Y into this meeting? Oh, this is definitely going to be a big black cock. Did, this is this is this could the, potentially the turn out into something like chat roulette. Well, this could be yeah, really weird. Was, <laughs> could be a bias you're hijacking my podcast. This is okay, a, this right? Is, okay, you've 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 stopped me there. It could be a virus. I'm not going to do it. But um, yeah, but that's funny. That that's that that's the new chat roulette. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> what's it called? Waxy, waxy Y, and it says, "What's called for that meeting?" <clears throat> oh. Hey, Waxy, if you're still watching, watching, tell us who this? you are and I what don't... you do. Yeah, have we actually got anybody watching this? Yeah, there's five people. Helen Harker is watching, <laughs> and so great. she's she she's um I'm, I know Helen from the Nail Channel, um okay. and she lives in Red Car. You've got Red to say car. Red Car. You can't say Red Car because apparently that's Red like. Car. Like really bad, you've got to call it Red Car. Racist. Um, they named it after the first thing they saw. Is that what, whose joke was that? Some, uh, that was somebody's joke. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I can't think whose joke. That um, was. So yes, Helen's. Uh, she was the one that thought you looked like Adam Driver. Oh, oh thanks, she, Helen. She, 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 <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, there's a few people watching. It probably we probably would have got a bigger audience on Facebook, but to be fair, I don't even I can't like I can't Facebook even doesn't that. want us. No, Facebook's just like nah. Oh, somebody else has come. Can you give us meeting info? 
So because it says Adam Wabda's Zoom meeting is the title, loads of like bombers are coming in asking for the um for the for the meeting codes. I don't even know how that happens. No idea or why I'm here, but bought out my arse, so I'm staying. Natasha Khan, welcome. It's all right. We'll uh we'll Hello. Hey, thanks, thanks. Yeah, there's Thank a few people are. coming in, so that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, yeah so board. what we're talking about, what what we what we were talking about before we got off on a tangent of me wanting to bring in weird people. We were talking about Fong masturbating on Skype. <laughs> oh, we, got over, we got over that topic. We got over I got a second because Natasha Khan, Natasha Khan's just said, "Ask me what nasal sex is." Oh, right, okay, cool. Natasha, what's uh, nasal? Ah. Is... <laughs> uh, Oh, this is chat roulette. It really is, just without so many dicks. <clears throat> How are we, Matt? There's going to be a big black cock prop up in any minute now. Well, like, we're not hitting any of it. So, to be fair, I don't even know how to invite people into it, so I'm not. I can't do it. So apologies, to folks. Um, well, I, I yeah. So we were talking about Matt when he got collared on Skype, um, yeah. having his dick that out. That time that he got cup. caught on Skype, mate. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, yeah, we were we were, we were we were homeless. We were living on ramen noodles. We were squatting in a warehouse, and she asked me for seventy five thousand pounds. Yeah, basically that was it. And then Nick, I swear I spoke to Nick, who was fucking no help. He just reminded me that I had no money. Thanks, mate. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, went back and then uh, called the police, obviously on the sly while I was talking to this woman. And she she was saying shit, but I basically said, you're trying to shame me, right? I'm oh, a comedian. I've got no shame. And <laughs> I'm really proud of my junk down there. So, all right, if you want to put it out, fucking do it. So she showed me the video and I was like, fucking, all right, nice. It was really well lit. It was a good shot. Do you know what I mean? Adam knows what I mean. Anyway, and then, um, so so that 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 that, did, that pissed her off a bit. So she she then changed the title of the video to uh, me wanking over uh, children or something along those those lines. So I was like, oh, oh. shit. Yeah, then upload it on the YouTube. Video, take it down. So, so got that got that report and taken down. So I was like, oh, well, this is a crime, so I, I should report it to the police. So then rang the police, <laughs> and then they told me to come down to the police station. So I went down to the police station, and then they tried to arrest me for exposing myself. And I was like, what the fuck is going on here? It was like I was in an episode of Black Mirror. It was fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> and that was before Black Mirror as well. Matthew, Ford. see man, you see some story. Like I couldn't say all this at the wedding, so <laughs> yeah. yeah. When you think my grandma's not going to watch this, you're having another laugh. You know what <laughs> I mean? I won't know what Skype is. His grandma will think this is television, man. She'll be like, "Oh yeah, Matthew's <laughs> on television." <laughs> You've been on television yeah, a few times. Up. Yeah, yeah. So tell I've us about been... your television experiences, Matt. The first, the first TV experience, no, it was uh, when I was five, 1991, uh, for the BBC, for the Clove show. So I was just yeah. thrust towards stardom from an early age. I didn't have any choice but to uh, follow a career path into loneliness and abject poverty. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> okay, so uh, what was the next then, one? What was the big uh, thing? Come some, on, you know what I'm asking. Did some extras work. I did, I did some extras work. I did some extras work on skins. All right, okay. Well, no, I'm going again. Um, I was on Richard and Judy. I was in Richard and Judy's Star Bar. It's where I met Stephen K. Amos. And that was the year before I started doing stand-up comedy. Right. Nick's smirking here. He's smirking already. I'm not smirking. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave you to continue talking. I've, I've been... I really need a wee, man. I was <laughs> okay. going to say you go for a wee, aren't you? Um, okay, so you, Stephen, Stephen K. Moss, we'll get on to him later. Um, yeah. Then, um, oh, gosh. I did some voiceover work for a, a BBC show. For, it was like a talking animal thing. And then um, after that was on um, 
uh, TV show hosted by Paddy McGuinness, uh, Take Me Out. On that. That's the one, baby. Yeah. You're like that was that was the big one, wasn't it? You were you were the you were the no, star. That wasn't the big one. That was that was the, that one sucks. Do you know you were I mean? the star of really it, sh- though, Matt. You came sh- down sh- in the lift. Mm. You came down in that little lift. Oh yeah, I came down in the the love of it. I tell you what, this fucking inside the love lift they call it. There's loads of pictures of beautiful women. Right, and in there, as I was coming down the lift, I spotted one, and it was like Susan Boyle. I was like, hey, you <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, so how long, we, like, what, what's, the, what's the whole deal with going on a show like that? So you were on um, Take Me Out, which is where there's how many women? 20, 30, something like that? Uh, 30 women. 30 women, and, and they yeah, all get women. to... Um, Basically, put their like, light out on you. Basically, go well. Do we like you? Do we not like? You? Basically, real life Tinder, right? Yeah. Tinder in front real, of you. Real life, but left, right, right, <clears throat> fucking right there. No, yes, no. <sighs> what can I say? Well, it, it, it's a very like, like when you watch it. Like I was a big fan of the show when I was watching it. Like from back home and on the couch, you go, oh, yeah, this looks fucking really good. First of all, it's fucking Fernando's. It's cold. It's like November. And we were in... Where is it? Uh, we were in Fernando's. I don't. I, I didn't read the contract, so I don't want to yeah, say where it Fernando's. is. Yeah, it's Dubai, ITV. But Fernando's is cold in November. And um, so, so you're there and you're in your shorts... And they go and act like it's warm. <laughs> <laughs> a bit like today. Well, Nick knows how, how much I feel the cold, right? Like, I feel the cold real bad. Like, it can be well, 18 degrees and I'll, I'll be in a jacket and sweat. Go, 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 going back to what we were talking a little bit about earlier, the comedy walk, that first year where Fong nearly froze to death. And, like, through the, middle of the, yeah. through the middle of the we night. Should, we shouldn't actually laugh because... Do you know somebody died on one of those nights? A filmmaker in Newcastle died. Really? He was exposed, yeah. So he, he was a documentary filmmaker, um, quite quite uh, popular as well, famous, whatever you want to call it. And he was out doing something about homeless people. He's froze to death. Yeah, well... Yeah, just to bring that down a little bit, there was a real you death. Could but Matthew so thought many he was going to die. many people's bodies on your hands... Do you know what I mean? If you didn't put me next to Tub Tub right here, fucking hell, I would have died. I, 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 cut, I, I broke a sleeping bag, so basically the sleeping bag wasn't keeping any of the warmth in anymore. All my heat was just, just pissing out the side of the sleeping Matthew, bag. Matthew, Matthew, didn't you share a tent with my two camera girls? <laughs> no. Yeah. No. I think you no. shared a tent no, with lots, lots of duvets with my two camera girls. I'm sure that's what happened. My wife is watching this right now live. You know those people. You and we're not we're not going into my sex escapades. <laughs> Funny, it was years before I even met you. Don't worry about it. Um, yeah. So so it was very cold. So yeah. So anyway, let's get back to you. Were on Take Me Out. You got picked. And um, and she took you to Fernando's, and it was horrific, was it? It wasn't horrific. All right, okay. This this is this is the way that I I see it. Right. Uh, were we well suited, personality wise? No, right. Not at all. Were we doing an activity that I really enjoyed? That that yeah. Okay, we got. I got put wake skating, which was an activity that I'd never done before, but it was it was crossing over like a lot of things that I really enjoyed. Skateboarding, just like skate, skateboarding, snowboarding, wakeboarding, just throw that all all together, and that's basically wake skating. So they threw me behind the back of this thing, and they're like, "Oh, he's never going to get off. It's just going to be like fucking an hour of him falling over, and like an hour of her falling over, and then we'll yeah. call it a day." I was up, and I was just fucking. 
bombing around for like three hours on the back of this speedboat, having the time of my life. <laughs> and she's bored as fuck on the back of the boat. We, we hardly got to speak to each other because they, unless the cameras are rolling, you're separate. Really? Yeah. Why? Why is that? Oh. Is that so they don't miss anything? Yeah, so they don't miss any of the real interaction. So it like but, it's like all fake interaction then. Mm. It's like oh, you, we're only gonna we're go, we're gonna yeah. film you. You're gonna be on telly when we. Yeah, that's that's not right. I think you know some some people. If you if you if you're two people that would perfectly suited, and you met during that process, yeah, it's gonna work for you. Other than that situation, I don't think it's a good way to go and find a partner. <laughs> you didn't do it to go and find a partner. I don't even think it's a good way to get any telly time either. Because <laughs> in, in the show, she clearly stated, she said that I wasn't a funny comedian. And I was like, <laughs> fuck you, bitch. <laughs> right? Just because you're not elevated enough to get my comedy doesn't mean that I'm not funny. Right? Hang on. Hang on. Elevated to get your comedy. All right, okay. You fine, wear yeah. a T-shirt that says "I love Beijing." No, I heart BJ, and <laughs> you're quoting a joke from ten years ago now, mate. So <laughs> you know what I mean. I do write, I do write new stuff, and I do get new T-shirts like this one, for example, here that you can get I online. I yeah. tell you what's getting a lot of tra tra uh, thing today. Oh, that's cool. Actually, that's really cool. You got a target on your back though. Yeah, Stephen K. Amos has bought one of these. <laughs> I bet he's, he's using that as a target. <clears throat> <laughs> so um, I was just going to mention, actually, a video that's gone out live yesterday uh, on our Facebook page, on the Neo Nails Facebook page. Um, it's got like 1.2 million views already. Um, yeah, yeah. No, and you're wearing a T-shirt on that that says, I love your mum. <laughs> One of my favourite t-shirts, that. Yeah, that's a, uh, well, my, everyone my, actually comments on that. My, sis, my like, sister, my sister yeah. watched that video today and went, "Is that Fong in a nail video?" I went, "Yeah." And <laughs> my, my, and my other mate Adam makes them. Oh, <laughs> so hello, Paula. Hi, Paula. <laughs> oh, Paula! I've got to give a shout out to Fishy Paula. How's it going? Fishy Paula. Um. So yeah. So you did the TV stuff and. Um, no, I see, I've done, a lot, I've, done, I've, done, I've done a fair bit of stuff, but I found out that if you want to progress in the career that I want to, I need there to be a role that's written for a uh, half Chinese character. Do you know what I mean? Because they're, 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 they're done with the cultural appropriation type stuff now. So unless you fit the mold of the character that they're looking for, mm. or the character is written as... English. As, uh, well, no, as as just that race doesn't matter. If a character's yeah. written where race doesn't matter, then that's fine. Then I can go and play that role. But I think most mm. people write a character and they go, well, this is the white character. This is the Asian character. This is the black character, whatever. They don't go, oh, well, we need to have like a mixed character, a mixed mm. family in there as well. I get right? you on that because uh, like it's... Obviously, there's a lot of remakes and stuff going on these days and reboots and all that kind of stuff. And it's like, there's a lot of what, what we normally call whitewashing, but then obviously there's the opposite side as well. So you'll have like Samuel L. Jackson playing a traditionally white character, that kind of thing. But then when when people are, are, are making um, films now and TV, there seems to be a bit of an agenda to get in race and sex especially. But then other things as well, and it's like they're trying to hit so many different targets. Yeah, um, it's a, it's a, so it, for to what I would class like for for you as a middle aged white man, because effective that you are, you're not middle aged, you, you're not as old as us two, but that's where you're getting yeah. to being a middle aged white man. Um, and uh, oh, some huh. were you on embarrassing bodies? No. All right. No, he wasn't on Embarrassing Bodies. Somebody's <laughs> actually saying, can I read the chat here? I totally forgot that was even there. Um, right, but yeah, okay. so Spleen Girl, um, hello. Nice to see you. She's commenting on quite a lot of our stuff. Daddy Fries, you know, getting the code. And uh, Natasha Khan's still here. Uh, she's the one saying, uh, aren't you reading the chat and interact with us? Can I join your Zoom? I think I've seen your mate on telly. Um, 
can we do yeah, trivia? Commentary, commentary, we do better. comedy. That's what I do better. I do I do much better doing jokes than I do a this and b standing in the background of other TV shows, just fucking walking yeah. around. Um. So yeah, I think there's like there's you've got to hit a lot of targets to get funded these days to do different things, and it's probably going down a bit of a weird, boring path. But I've been trying to get films made, uh, especially short films, because there's no money in them. Um, it's hard to, to get the funding for them. So you go to like government bodies and they're like, all right, okay, so uh, where's your diversity? And I'm like, well, I'm a skint bloke from the Northeast <laughs> and I'm half Algerian. Does that count? I'm like, oh, um, no, you need to be female or you need this or you need that. And it's it, it's sort of like hitting targets as opposed yeah. to just going for the, the stories themselves. Yeah, I mean, that for me, that's... This is why there's so much repeaty stuff over and over again because they're using the same writers all the time. They never give like new talent a chance. Really, mm. it's just oh no, you you've not got this name. You you you've not written on anything successful. So we'll stick with the successful writers. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. The... Yeah, yeah, I agree. I, I totally agree with that. Um, but I don't want to go down a bit of route because I've had a few cans and I'll start shouting about the BFI and things like that. <laughs> <laughs> They're not giving me loads of money. Although I think I'm actually getting some some money out of them to make a film about werewolves. Um, funny enough, the comedy. Um, Natasha said, "You didn't read my nasal sex response." Come on, Adam. Um, so her nasal. So ask me what nasal sex is, um, and then the response was no question mark. Thought it was a good one. That I'm really confused. Yeah, I have no idea. I'm assuming nasal sex is. Probably putting a dick up a fucking nostril. What Matt's dick? No <laughs> way. That would that would cause permanent damage to her face. That is not that's not a good way to die. <laughs> Nasal sex. <laughs> She's really upset that I haven't got that joke, but um, anyway, we'll move on. Oh, well, so sorry, let's uh, let's move on to something that has happened recently with you, Matt. Right, okay, cool. So there was a stag do, and then the same the thing that happens after a stag do is the wedding. The wedding. So Matt wedding. Got married in February. Oh dude, fuck it. I'm basically the most chill groom in history. Right? <laughs> yeah, he was chilled as fuck. Everybody else was stressing. Try and roll this up. Impossible. Unless you trap me in Australia in a foreign country with fuck all money. Can I just say like... something about your wedding, Matt? I was really disappointed there was no Chinese food. I was really wow. disappointed. Just, just throwing it straight out there, yeah? Totally, yeah. I was like, this, <laughs> this wedding was going to be there. awesome. This wedding right, was going to so... be awesome, and then there was no Chinese food. And I was like, how are you, man? Not even <laughs> like half Chinese. Chinese. Saved, on <laughs> Saved on the wedding, all right, to have an awesome honeymoon. So where did you go for your honeymoon, Matt? What's not now a honeymoon? All right, so this was the plan, right? All right, plan was, all right, fly Australia, Australia for four days, camper van, all right, music festival, and then followed by cruise around the Fijian Islands. Back to Australia, go home. Sounds Magical, once-in-a-lifetime experience. Do you know what I mean? Just perfect. Come on more than that. All right, so two days before we set off, <laughs> cruise rings, and goes, oh, uh, your cruise is cancelled. So we're like, all right, great. So then I ring um, to see if we can cancel the flights, but because Australia's not on the uh, FCO, no fly zone, still perfectly fine to fly to Australia. If we were to cancel the flights, that's on us, so we'd we'd lose like fifteen hundred quid each. So it'd be like three thousand pounds we'd, we'd wow. lose. And then um, we go to a sleep. <laughs> is what happens at the end of a day. Wake up the next day. Right? Okay. I'm still recovery mode. Right from the trauma of losing the cruise, but I might. Like, don't worry about it. We can book another cruise. There's other cruises that go around Fijian Islands that set off on Melbourne around that time. Or oh, Sydney, not Melbourne. 
So we'll still, we'll still go, we'll make the most of it. We'll have an awesome time. It's going to be a great honeymoon, all right? While, while I'm having that conversation with, with my wife, she then tells me that Download Festival is now cancelled and we can't get money back from the hotel or for the flights, the internal flights, because it's still a fine to fly and it's fine to be in the hotels and stuff. Yeah. So we'll still just go to Melbourne and fly back and, and come through. So we'll, we'll still go because, again, the insurance is like now because it, it's, it's fine to fly and use those things. We're not going to... Fine. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? No pandemic going on. I know. What are you like? We're fucking, we've said. We've said it. I was like their harbinger of doom. Every morning I'd like ring them on their nighttime and go, this is what's happening today. This so what day, day did you fly out there? Pardon? What day did you fly? Uh, so we flew out on Friday the 13th. <laughs> you can't write this shit. You can't write it. Right, <laughs> well, on Friday the 13th, landed like two days later because of the time difference. Right, so by the time we leave, fucking, uh, the, we, we have one decent night in Australia where everything's cool, we don't have to self isolate. Self isolation isn't even a thing, doesn't exist, you know what I mean? And then, literally, the news that night was like, right, people about arriving from abroad need to self-isolate or go in quarantine for two weeks as soon as they arrive. But because we arrived, like, literally the day before, we didn't have to just stay in that hotel. Otherwise, that hotel would have forced us to fucking stay there. And then, so we go and pick up a camper van, and we'll go, well, we're going to make the most of shit. Right? We're going we're gonna to do this. We, we st- and you should have seen... This honky tonk. It's not even a camper van. I don't even know why I'm calling it a camper van. It was a converted people carrier. And people, it, it had 180,000 miles on it. It was imported from Hong Kong. And <laughs> oh, God. Like, it was the mystery machine from Scooby Doo. And it, like, <laughs> that's what it was. It was painted like the mystery machine and the mystery machine fucking across the side. So every time. We, we're driving down the motorway, okay, and there's a kid in a car that's passing us because we can't go faster than fucking 70 kilometers an hour. Because you can put f- foot's on the floor and this thing's eating gas. This little kid is in the window like that. <laughs> looking, looking for Scooby Doo. And there's just me and, and the wife there sweating our tits off in our honeymoon. <laughs> <laughs> right? In miserable where are you where are you sleeping in the back of the minivan? Can can I can imagine the conversation with the Australians? Oh, are you are you right there? Uh, yeah, me and me and me and the last we're in our in our bus and we're sitting here sweating our tits off, love. <laughs> Proper Yorkshire. Yeah, we've just... we got to go get some food and supplies and that. So we went to the supermarket. We got us up water. And always got us some ramen noodles as well. Because that fucking minivan that we had bloody hired as a fucking camper, that bloody minivan, right, it didn't have no fridge. It didn't have no bloody fridge. So we didn't have nowhere to put our food. Didn't have nowhere to put our bloody food, did we? So we had fucking ramen noodles and fucking water. Isn't that what it? And kebabs, apparently. You told us you ate kebabs. All right, okay, yeah, we had kebabs, ramen noodles... Sandwiches the that, that we made. The last few days was really then, sweet. <laughs> oh yeah, mate. We stayed in it so fucking because we were like, "Fuck this, let's get back." So we got we got an apartment, rented an apartment by the airport, and fuck me, it was nice about our house. <laughs> you know what I mean? We should have just stayed there. It would have cost an arm and a leg. It, it was it was ridiculous, but it was it was much nicer than being in that that minivan. Yeah. Yeah, man. It was much, much better for mine and Helen's relationship. Do you know what I mean? We we came back together. She didn't annul anything, which is great. <laughs> Please tell everybody about how <laughs> you were you were having problems getting in touch with British Airways. <laughs> it's just as oh, good stuff for my ego, this I think. Oh, it's, oh ladies oh, and gentlemen, okay. so, sit I, back, prepare I, I, for I, I, an I, epic I, rant. I'm going to say fun. this about British Airways. All right, I'm going to say this about British Airways. First of all, British Airways, 
You did get me home, right? You did. But, right? <laughs> a four times the price of a normal flight. Four times the price. And do you know how much service we got for that price? Fucking like a quarter. I don't know. I don't, actually, I can, I can add it up. Because we got a, a pack up sandwich, right? Now you get a square. Oh, I'm going to show you. I'm going to go get a slice of bread. This is. Right. <laughs> Could have you not just gone like that? Yeah. Rather than go and get so a slice bad. of bread. Slice of bread. <laughs> and, and, any any comments? Well, the thing is, when when he was when when Matt was commenting on Twitter and not on Facebook about the fact that he couldn't get in touch, I decided to like have a quick comment on Twitter. Saying British Airways shape up, motherfuckers. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and they commented back to me and they were like, Oh, your mate needs to comment. So Matt commented underneath and then they ignored him completely. So, like an <laughs> hour later, I commented saying, Why haven't you got in touch with him yet? And then, <laughs> and then, they, told him, and then they, they said, told him to tell me to get in touch with him. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, do, God do, bless do, him. Do you want to know something? I can show you my phone bill. My phone bill will tell you how much I was trying to get all oh, the fucking British Airways. Really? Yeah. Oh, oh my God. Yeah, of course. That's horrendous. Right. So, 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 come on, how big is a slice like, of bread? But, buddy, fuck. All right. So, basically. <laughs> uh, right. Slice, normal slice of bread. Right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, you put this slice of bread and another slice of bread. Boom. That's make a sandwich. how a sandwich works, mate. So, it was cut down here. Mm -hmm. And yeah. down here. So you had soldiers. You had, so you had two fingers of bread, but where was the third finger? <laughs> I understand what you're saying, yeah. Was it not yeah. a was it not a triple decker sandwich? No. Oh you had, right. You had, crust, you had crust on one side and no crust on the other side. So they'd given that to somebody else. So yeah, they'd fucking got your meal. They got no, but the thing is, I, I checked. I checked the person next to me eating sandwich. I, I, long, I, I, see, I secretly, yeah, because I fucking love food. <laughs> like you know how much I love food. All right, seriously, Adam, I should have your buddy with with the amount of, of love I have for food. Like <laughs> I don't deserve this gimme frame. It's not. I, I ate a whole chocolate cake this week. <laughs> <laughs> Haley made chocolate brownies yesterday with Isaac and I've eaten like two big slabs of it. Oh yeah, my man. god. Yeah, I made an eight rest. stack of waffles the other day. A sack? Stack. I thought you said a sack of waffles. I was gonna say, what the fuck does a sack of waffles how look you, like? How do you get your so, waffles? So come on, let's let, 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 let's switch it back around to so you were you you got home. He <laughs> just um, gets up and leaves. Just fucking, he's gone back to Australia. <laughs> <laughs> he's catching the plane. This I was going to say to him actually. Um, so sure. when we were when we were in Edinburgh, when we were in Edinburgh, I thought, right, okay, we're going to grab some food together, you know, because we haven't eaten together in a long time. So I ordered like a ridiculous amount of food. We had like the biggest platter going and all this stuff, and it was my trait on mad. <laughs> Tell him what happened. <laughs> It was my saddest meal of all of Edinburgh. <laughs> saddest meal. It was my saddest. I was so sad that whole meal. But to be fair, speaking to our Adam really helped. Like that that little conversation that we had. He basically was like, "Don't mean anything. <laughs> Doesn't change your show." Like, how many people have you got waiting for your show now? And I was like, "Fucking no idea. It's seven o'clock." And he was like, you're probably going to start up tonight, aren't you? And I was like, fucking don't know. And then, like, it was literally, what, 10 minutes before my show started and the queue was yeah, around the corner. It was, yeah. But Matt got so the review, you know, because he, he, you rang him to make sure he was all right, didn't you? What, about no, the he, review? Didn't, he didn't ring me to check if I was all right. He was ringing me to make sure I read the fucking review. He was the fucking <laughs> <he> was <laughs> me the bastard. Oh, of all the nights for that person to come in for the for that thing, you knew you'd had a bad I, night that night. Yeah, I, as soon as, I, soon as I, Fong, as soon as Fong had said to me, he goes, "Oh, I think I'm getting reviewed in the next couple of days." I was like, "Hundred percent, it's that night. Hundred <laughs> <laughs> percent, it is." <laughs> I, had, I had an absolute stinker of a gig. Um, 
but I figured out what the problem was. So when there when there was large numbers of East Asian people in versus Caucasians, it was God, fine. you look like your dad at the minute sat sat like that. He does, doesn't he? Yeah. He's got the hands. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> it's even worse. <laughs> No, so what I'm saying is, like, if, when we had high levels of East Asians in, and the Caucasians could visually see them laughing, then that was fine, right? But when there was a few East Asians in, and a high number of, of Caucasians in, and because the room was such a brightly lit room, everybody could see each other, which is not a good conditions for stand-up comedy. In, in yeah. comedy, you want to see the comedian, and the audience have complete anonymity. You know, they, you don't want to, you don't want the person next to you know that you're giggling your ass off at a joke that's a, it's about a rape. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> you don't want to be sat next to that person. Like, you would want to go, right, okay, not for me, move. But when it's. Or you don't want to be me, laughing at racist I, stuff while there's people of that race in the room. No, but my stuff's not racist. <laughs> Is that just because you say it, it's not racist? No, it's yeah. not. It's, it's not racist. <laughs> he can get away with it because he's half Chinese. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I'm like, not I saying could, that at all. I couldn't, I, couldn't go on, I couldn't go on stage and do your set. No, he definitely people, couldn't. People look at me and go, what the fuck is this guy on about? <laughs> yeah, because that, that's your experience. Look at, look, at, look at my face now. Can you not tell how my skin tone has changed in the course <laughs> of this beer? <laughs> oh god yeah of course yeah because you go a bit red when you've had a beard don't yeah. you? and that's that's genetic that one, that, it's, that's, it's, that's, um, that's just stuff that i can't help and yeah, yeah that's in my set i talk i talk about in the british born chinese yeah, you do, yeah you do yeah coming back in 2020 when the pandemic no 2021 apparently when the pandemic's over yeah so and then you can buy a t-shirt <laughs> you'll just cha you'll uh, change the 2020 to 2021 on it with a I've got a hundred of these upstairs. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But I, Matt, at the end of the day, look, you made it back from Australia. You're now selling your wares. You're doing Spider Man on Twitch. What's that? Just for fans? Only just fans is going to be your next Only thing. fans. Only fans. I'll start on Only fans. Yeah. And what should I live stream? I should live stream naked housework. Yeah. Just me overing. I think that'd work. Do you know, you you got a lot of love on the Neo Nails channel. Um, a lot of the, because uh, the, you did four videos with us. You got yeah. a lot of love. And even somebody I, today, even somebody today on the Facebook page went, oh my God, Kirsty's boyfriend's really hot. Uh, it was, there was no, there's no, I, I didn't understand all that sexual chemistry vibe, and that was just people having bands. And that was the <laughs> Neo Nails audience reading into things. All right. Do you yeah. know what I mean? <coughs> it was a lot of fun hanging with <coughs> uh, and you and just Mixed chilling. Okay. He's got coronas. Just, just hit mute. <coughs> just hit the mute button, you Doyle. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Die in peace. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I think it's good to engage with different audiences. And, and, and when you gave me the opportunity to come down and, and do that nail piece, I was like, yeah, that'd be, that'd be brilliant to come down. Yeah. And I got more followers from it. And you put the video on again today. And, you know, it's, every little helps. So It does. It definitely does. But definitely you got a few um, uh, very feisty women on there after you, I think. And men. Yeah, no, Don't worry, that's fine, because I get marriage proposals from men quite often on that channel. Um, but you are more men than a women. pretty boy. <laughs> pretty fat boy. Aww, pretty bad for a pH. while. Uh, anyway. So, yeah. Um, that was cool. I enjoyed that. Yeah, I mean... You're still on mute, Nick. Yeah, Nick's he's... talking to us and he's still muted. <laughs> Well, I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> knew that was going to happen. What were you going to say, Nick? Just add some mute, yeah. uh, I was just saying, um, before we start wrapping this up and that, because I said, 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 said I'd mention it, like, Fong's missus, she uh, shaved her eyebrows off the other day. 
What? Helen shaved her eyebrows off. Yeah, yeah. Knew I don't care. Okay. No. That's made me it's... wonder what would I look like without eyebrows? Different. I've got quite. I've well, got some you'd slugs look, there. You'd look, like a, you'd look like a long-haired potato. No, you'd look really weird. Just do it in Photoshop. <laughs> 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 What? Uh, what? Does it work? <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't work as well for me. I'm totally lost what you're on about. Well, Abdur's got two big, thick old slugs on the top of his eyes there. Do it the other way around. Do it. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, I'm going to Photoshop you tomorrow, mate. You're going you're gonna to love it. <laughs> You'll know what you look like with my eyebrows. Actually, when I was 14, 13, in fact, we went to um, Holland with the school. And the captain's audition for the eyebrows raising on the... As, um, you, as, as, as teenagers do, they get very drunk. Um, and the, the legal limit to drink in a Holland at the time was like 16 or 15, I think. So we managed to sneak into the bars and, and, and got shit-faced and bought beer in the, in the shops and everything. Anyway, I got that. Did you do better that time in Amsterdam than when you came with them? Yeah, I did. Went? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> fuck you. Um, anyway, I got drunk and in the middle of the night, somebody shaved my eyebrow off. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that wasn't the worst thing that had happened to everybody. So um, there was people who got worse done to them than me, but they shaved like half of this eyebrow off, I think. <laughs> Nice. It was so weird I, the next morning because I was washing my face and, and I was looking at myself in the mirror and and I knew there was something not right, but I couldn't quite figure it out. I was about I think I think I think the worst that I had for that was about 16 and I got prop I got really drunk in my mate's shed. And then I woke up the next morning, I had a football pitch drawn on my back in permanent marker and, ha and half my half the side of my face coloured in. Like <laughs> coloured in. Like they, my mate went, oh yeah, we were going to draw on the other side of the face, but like halfway through when we were colouring this side of your face in, you went, ooh, and turned the other way. So we were like, so we just drew like little swells and stuff on the other side, coloured in half my face. I'm like, Jesus, man. I even had on my feet, they'd even taken my shoes and socks off and drew Nike Air Max trainers on my feet. That's brilliant. I used to do that because one of my good friends, Goldie, used to like he he still does actually. There's a video on my YouTube channel about about him falling asleep on a toilet. Um, but we 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 got some imac. Okay. Um, um, we put it all in his hat and rubbed it on his hair and then put his hat on and uh, just left him like uh, for about six hours and then he went home and then all of his hair started falling out. Oh no! <laughs> he went to the doctor. He thought he was ill. <laughs> he thought he got radiation poisoning or something. <laughs> <laughs> They'd a spider. I've been watching my oh. microwave. Oh, it's so evil, man. So it was so evil, lads. It's ridiculous. I'm sure. We're, I wonder if girls do horrible shit like that to each other. Do you think that bad? Uh, I think with girls, it would probably be more psychological. Yeah, than, probably. Than, than practical. All right, yeah, your mate's hair was gone, but, you know, in, in, in two months, back. no one no one noticed. Yeah, whereas, you know, girls, I think, of course, like that permanent scar. They might even not do it straight away. They might wait like five years and then just be like. <laughs> <laughs> so, right, let's go back to Helen. Why she shaved her eyebrows off? Oh, so basically it was just an accident with her, her razor. She normally has a guard on it, but she didn't notice that she didn't have the guard on it. She went, <laughs> It wasn't, ah, oh, because I've seen, it's, right, so there's this TikTok. thing going it's, around on, I think it's TikTok. Yeah, I was going to say people, it's a TikTok. People are doing it on TikTok. And what, there's, the, basically, there's a, <laughs> there's a TikTok noise sound that is of a razor right so the sounds a razor and basically you just get a, a set of shears don't switch them on and just go like that across your face right, right? and it makes it look like you've taken them off but because you can hear it and you right. can hear the sound sort of like going 
Um, oh, hang on. She, Helen's on here. <laughs> oh, she's saying, she's saying, I did one and so I had to do the other. Uh, she, she, she did one and was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> Sorry for misquoting you, dear. <laughs> she's keeping an eye on everything I do. <laughs> Oh, but yeah, the TikTok sounds really get you because you think it's real. You think it's a real thing, but it's not. It's the sound. That's the... Because uh, everyone thought I could like speak in a perfect Scottish accent the other day when I did that video. I think you saw it, Nick, didn't you? And you commented. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I was like, I had a good, really, really good Scottish accent, but it's it's TikTok. Okay. We're just dubbing. we just... Yeah. Well, no, you can't even see it. It's just... Oh, it's more people are coming on here asking what the idea is. It's the like, ID, yeah, to join. get into the chat. They want to join in. How many people? I think we're gonna have to start doing that, but for now, I think we'll stick to ourselves. But you're gonna start letting let, hey, what's the point then if they want to chat with us? Chat in the uh chat bar, you're gonna get hacked. Yeah, I think it, it's it's exciting for people to come on to you know and speak to celebrities like Matt Fong. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it'd just be like some hate speech. Oh, they're gonna come on and buy a t shirt. You want to buy a t shirt? Check me out. They come straight like, on. They're like, "Oh, what's the green screen for?" <laughs> and this is the people will be changing shit right now. They'll be like, "Oh, oh I'm in Tokyo." Well, you can do that anywhere um, on here, which is really cool. So okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to space now. Um, wow! Hello. How, how did you do that? Um, so if you go to the stop oh, where the nice. video bit is oh, and press the up arrow. Can you see it? Yeah. Choose virtual background and um, sit on the beach. You don't have it on the phone. No, you don't. You got it, Matt? Yeah, I'm uh, just picking an image. Which is... I think because you've got a green screen behind you, you could actually key anything in you want. You could like key in a picture of, uh, of of Nick if you wanted to. You just click. I have a green screen. I don't know what this picture is going to be of. Oh, oh, here I am in his bedroom. <laughs> no, this is this is a, of a holiday in, in Florida. There's a the TV. Okay. This is the blue room. So it's blue and beige. And it's got blue bedding. That's why it's called the Blue Room. Right. If you want to rent this villa, come check me out on my website. <laughs> <laughs> He's forever the salesman. Forever. I'm not, right. I'm not. I'm not. It's not like I plug the Mayflower gravy mix at all. I've not done that. All the Mayflower curry sauces are available in shops. You can buy them now before it runs out. I've not been plugging anything. <laughs> Oh, not oh. oh, brilliant. Brilliant. Well, it's been a pleasure talking to you, Matt Fong. Yeah, yeah man. You know, don't you? You're like, I can't monetize this motherfucker. Right, <laughs> I'll gonna... tell you what, just send my dad a message. Say, send us a check in the post. <laughs> <laughs> so him. We you all want to it him. all. Um, uh, I've just figured out this background stuff now, and now you're trying to you, you close it off. It, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get loads of... <clears throat> Loads of backgrounds for next time if you ever have me back on. Follow, yeah, definitely. You can follow Matt on Twitter. Well, I think you're going to have to because Nick's so lazy at the moment. Look at him, man. I don't think he's going to last much longer. He's just not professional at all. I really <laughs> enjoyed speaking to Nick on this conversation. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm just listening to the banter that's going on. I'll dip in when I want This to is what it's like when he's on a phone call. He just sits and listens to you for an hour and then goes, all right, see you later, mate. <laughs> Yeah, you can tell he's had a joint today, can't you? He's like, he's had two puffs and that's it. He's fucking, he's Mr. Melty Man. Have you seen that advert where they just like melt into the couch? <laughs> You're disappearing, Fong. The chair's eating you. <laughs> cool. Right. right. We've got two people left watching. I'm going to guess there are two Helens watching. One is Bailey, well, Fong now, um, and the other's probably Helen Harger. So, um, yeah. I'm going to wrap this up and thank you very much, Matt. It's been a pleasure. Thank no you, worries. Nick. It's always been a pleasure. A meeting or anything, yeah, so I, I, I don't know how it's yeah. going to work, but it, um, I just got one more thing to say before I go. Okay, guys. 
Okay. Okay. And 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 that is basically. <laughs> I knew he was going to do that. <laughs> <Yeah. Dick it. laughs> so, um, yeah, that's, it, man. that's another one done. Number seven. Yeah, fantastic. Really good chat with Matt. I love talking to Matt. Um, we have a right good laugh. Somebody else has come on now, so um, we might just stay and talk for more. <laughs> <laughs> no, we won't. Uh, I'm going to go and sit in the hot tub for a little bit. Oh, nice little little night, late night hot tubbing. Late night hot tubbing. Watch the stars. There's some so, stars out we'll there. Back so. on, when will we be doing this again? Wednesday? Yeah, I think you said Wednesday we're going to speak with... Um... Dale Jenkins, Jenks. Yeah, yeah Dale Jenks. Yeah. Um, and he's a kickboxer or judo, did you say? Judo. Judo. Judo player. Um, so, yeah, we'll have a good chat with him. And, uh, yep. We'll have that's a great. Um, good night, Helen. And Helen. Right, Helen. Uh, night, thanks Helen. for watching the whole thing. I'm... <laughs> Hope we haven't been so boring. <laughs> <laughs> if you're watching this tomorrow, give us a like, share the page. Yeah, absolutely, please do. We're just trying to make some content. It's just it's just us talking nonsense with people we know. So <laughs> come join in or don't. <laughs> <laughs> don't. Don't get your dick out. Right, cool. All right, dude. All right. See you later, man. Pleasure.